You're listening to Grassroots Communities' What Really Matters podcast. My name is Ben Carpenter and we'll be talking with young people across Bristol about what really matters to them. Also, we'll be talking with adults in communities with lived experience and professionals like youth workers about what it's like for young people growing up in our city today. On this episode, we've been chatting to Stephen Manley, 14 years old from Arkcliff, about what really matters to him. Hello, Stephen. Hello. <laughs> you can say hello. Um, how's it going, mate? You all right? Yeah, true. Cool. So, just going to ask you a few questions, as we just discussed a minute ago. Like, can you remember how we first met? Yeah, at Merchant. Can you remember what we were doing at Merchant? Oh, uh, yeah, we were doing a boxing thing for youth, uh, for youth people. And we were, I was out there and I saw you. I remember you being particularly good at that as well. I think we'll probably come on to that in a bit anyway, because you'll, you'll start to be boxing again now, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. And then I'd seen you, I, I, then I'd seen you at Merchant. Yeah. In, in the school, didn't I? Yeah. In a class. And what, what was going on there? What class was that? What was, what was going uh, on? Oh, that was Spanish and that was just... Spanish? Yeah. It, was it wasn't Spanish. Spanish. It was in, um, I don't know what they call it. Is it the... Maths. No, it was in the, like, the alternative education bit. What's it called? Oh, Learning Lodge. The Learning Lodge. Yeah. And what, what were you in there for? Why were you in there? Because I was a little... Language, Timothy. Yeah. <laughs> I was a little poo bum back then. Is it because of behaviour you were in there? Yeah. 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 No, ah, okay. I mean, I wonder if you could just like say a little bit about what it's been like growing up in Arkcliff. That yeah. that could be at home. That could be in the community. Yeah. Um, what challenges you faced, and, and some of the positive things. Mm. So in Arkcliff, I grew up from there as I was little, and then it was a challenge because the word would like when I was a little kid was just bike coming up and down. Obviously, I was into my bikes, so mm. obviously I used to watch them go up and down my road and that. Are we talking push bikes or motorbikes? Motorbikes. Okay, yeah. And obviously, as I started going out. I had a mate, and like, he was mates with them all. So one day I met them all, and uh, we all went there, and we were just all riding bikes. And then it all started off as that, and then we all come become mates. And then now we just have a laugh and that together. So this is, this is people that you hang around with now, then? Yeah. You're talking about. So, I mean, m- maybe before, like a little bit before, what was it like growing up at home when you were a bit younger and, and in the community? Uh, well, obviously... Didn't really like it at first because obviously back then like, I used to be a sleeper. You used to be a what sort? A sleeper, like where I just sleep twenty four seven. Wow. Okay. And now like it's ruined my habit a bit because now, like if I wait if I have a bike I wait straight up and I'll look out my window, I'll see him come up and then I'll get dressed and go out. So you say you're a sleeper, as in was there some kind of con- condition where you literally you. Fall, fall asleep you'd have to sleep a lot or was it because you I was just, just didn't want to get up yeah I just didn't want to get up so I fell asleep again and I didn't wake up till about 2 o'clock in the afternoon at that point were you engaged in anything like were you doing doing yeah. stuff or do you think it was because you were just I was doing uh, I was doing contact rugby at one point and then I turned on to uh, being a barber with my best mate and then that was it really being a barber and this is this this conversation is just, just jumping <laughs> Where did the barber bit come from? This I used is to do it with my best mate. Okay. When I was younger, I used to cut his hair and that. Just did you cut him too? That was just your friends. Did you start cutting other people's hair? Or yeah. I was cutting like all my mate's hair and that. Were cut. they all having... Yeah, yeah bald on top, just to be funny, innit? Oh, I don't know. It looks all right. You've got one of them now, haven't you? It looks all right. Yeah. It's easy, easily done. Easily to look after. <laughs> nice. Good job on that, mate. Just saying. But... Could be a job in that. Um, what kind of positive things then do you do you see out in the community? Um, a load of young people is getting involved with certain things now. So like Dan Green the other day, there was like a community thing. So there's like bounce castles and there's people down there like doing food and that for them, for the young people and that. So that everyone used to get out there and just go down there, just go on the bounce castle and go on the pump track and that. 
Do you think that that's new? Do you think there's more things that seem to be about at the moment in Arcliffe? Not not as much as there used to be, but it has changed a lot recently, yeah. For the better, do you think? or for? Yeah, for the better, yeah. Okay. And I just want to put, like, push you back into like the challenges, I guess, like the challenges that you might have. Again, it could be at home or it could be um, out in the community, but what kind of things have, have been challenges for you growing up in Arcliffe? Um, be honest, there's no right or wrong answer. Obviously, I live in Arcliffe, and obviously, Hartcliffe and Noel West is arguing. So, obviously, between me being a Hartcliffer and people over West, we clash. So, every time I go over there, I see family, I always get chased or something like that. You've got family in Noel, have you? Yeah. Yeah. And is that something that still, do you still go over and see him now? No, I don't see him at all. Is it because of that reason? No. Why is that then? Why is that? Because I ain't wasting my time over there just to get chased and then me going there for a couple of hours and then my nan goes to work and it's just, nah, not happening with me. I'd just rather stay in Arcliffe and just do my own thing. Do you know, I'm only going to touch on this just because we, we spoke to um, Layla the other week from, from Northwest and yeah. to be honest, I was feeling a bit under the weather and I wasn't on it enough to kind of follow things up. But she, I mean, she was talking about you know, the, the challenges, the things that go on between Arcliffe and Noel West and, and pretty much saying, you know, like preferring to keep herself to herself and staying in Noel West. Very similar to what you were saying about staying in Arcliffe. Yeah. And what I didn't say to her then, I thought of it, but I didn't say it because the conversation went off on another kind of tangent. It was just like, how, how do you think things could get better I reckon Be- between those two communities. I reckon Hartcliff and Noel should just meet in the middle of Hartcliff Way, and I reckon we should scrap it out. But no tools at all. Do you re- do you really think that that will end up solving what has been problems with like violence? And I know it's not just that. There's other things that happen, yeah. aren't there? To do with various things, whether it be crime or drugs or whatever. But do you really think that that would? mean that everyone would come together and they did suddenly say all right let's let's stop all this rubbish where people are worried about going to other communities to see their family because let's be honest a lot of families are split across those communities yeah you know i don't think there's much different between people from difference from people from those communities do you really think that getting into a mass ruck would solve long term the issues that are currently happening now with the knives and the various things Mm, i reckon it well the fact is because if we all met in the middle of Hartcliffe Way and we said to them, put on our Snapchat, Snapchat, no one bring tools and the first the first team to say enough is the losers, basically. But it'd be unfair, the fact is because Hartcliffe, we got more people and we're more stronger than No West, I reckon. Well, I think that would probably be up to debate to whoever's talking. Like a terrible look at your face. Who knows? All I'm getting from hearing that is things get worse as soon as something happens. Yeah. Right? As soon as someone gets stabbed or something happens, suddenly between the the two communities, things get worse. Yeah. If you suddenly met up in a central place and said, let's just go at it and whoever wins, wins and forgets, someone's always going to get more hurt than others because that's just how it is. That's how it is. And then it continues that whole cycle. And what I was going to say to Layla, which I didn't get a chance to say to her, is how do you think... Like, there's there's many, many countries and, and situations, different cities, where there's been issues with gangs or whether it be through, like, fighting with wars. So I'll give you an example. Ireland, as in the country, Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland, or the Republic of Ireland, mostly around religion mm. and different beliefs um catholic or protestant yeah but a lot of kids would grow up in those communities over the time they won't even know anything about particularly about the religion it's just they were brought up with you have to eat them from over there yeah and it feels like it's kind of the same what's going on now kids that are you know younger than yourself or maybe your age are kind of just being brought up with thinking they've got eight people but not necessarily knowing why. And I just think the only way that those things have ever stopped, and this ain't me, what do I know? I'm just like trying to tell you what has happened and worked in the past. It's by people talking. Yeah. But I know if it comes to talking, 
there'd be people getting involved and it'd be more family getting involved and then it'd escalate to where it come to um, people's families and that would get hurt uh, and then it'd just escalate even more to uh, people dying and that. Like, it's but not those really things worth happen it. now, Stephen. Like, those things happen now and, and what needs to change maybe is trying something different. That, mm. that, I mean, I, I don't know what the solutions are mm, and, yeah. I, and I can't tell you that that is going to solve everything anyway. But I can imagine there's probably key people in both those communities that if they were involved in those discussions, yeah. they have influence over other people. Yeah. And it just kind of feels like maybe that's got to be something worth trying. And and like I said, I, I didn't get to say it to, to Layla, but I mean, is that something that you would be interested in doing? And it's not just you. I'm not saying that you're like a kingpin and all this stuff, because I know you're not. Mm. But there will be others. But do you think that's something that people would be interested in doing? Just trying to... So you haven't got to look over your shoulder. Yeah. I reckon Hartcliffe should just stay in Hartcliffe. And no, she just stay in no one. There'll be no problems. But the first person that goes over, then there'll be consequences for them. Why? That means you can't see your nan. Yeah, but I'm on about like to start shit. What people... Yeah, but that's the whole point. Having those, hopefully trying to get those key people together to have those conversations mm. and to start. And it might be that the projects need to happen over it. People going off on residentials, people doing something together as a group to do something that is bigger than them that matters to both of those communities. I mean, I'm just making this up. It could be some kind of big community event, a blooming rave, or God knows what. Yeah. But young people coming together from both of those communities, putting all their ideas together and doing something together and I don't, I haven't seen that happen yet. And unfortunately, with all the stuff that me and Donna do and youth work and, and all the rest of it, all this stuff comes down to money. But if there was any, ever anything, it would be working out, and we know who those people are, key people are, mm. and then be actually be funded to kind of try and bring them together to do something. Yeah. But I told you I was going to challenge you. <laughs> so, so, sorry. Um, what what things do you get up to in your community then with friends and clubs, etc. and why? Um, really, me personally, mm. I wake up in the mornings, I go to school and that, do my job. Where where is it you're going to school now? Lansdowne. So do you wanna explain a bit about Lansdowne? Because that's it's not like main it's not mainstream no. school, is it? So basically Lansdowne is like um not a naughty school, but it's it's a school to help you out. And uh there's like certain people in there that's like issues and like can't be even that. So Lansdowne is a Lansdowne is like a tiny school to help you graduate your behaviour back up and try and make you build up to mainstream. But um, the, as the school has not like how can I put it? the school hasn't fixed up yet, so they're taking people out instead of going into the school. And the school's got um, on Bristol News uh, is the worst school ever. So Lansdowne has been on Bristol News. So I, I, do you know what? I mean, I kind of, well, I'll just be honest with you. Like, obviously, I, I met you at Merchant yeah. School and you were, at that time, you were in their own kind of pupil referral unit, basically yeah. young people misbehaving to try and get them back into mainstream. Yeah. I don't know why you ended up at Lansdowne, but I'm guessing because something must have happened. Yeah, I was put in Learning Lodge and slash AP, and I went back to mainstream. And obviously, I'm a kind of person, like, if I don't like what I'm doing, I'll throw off on one, and I won't do it. But um, other people, like, other people would actually, like, get involved with me as well. So I think I'm the funny person, and I'll actually go around terrorising people and that's just my life really that's why I put into Lansdowne so you've gone there and I just like my worry with all this is I'm not listen to dig at education because I you know it must be difficult for teachers yeah. in a room on their own maybe with a teaching assistant yeah. with 30 odd kids and if there's a few in there that really don't want to play ball do you know what I mean yeah. it must be difficult having said that there's not really, I can't see it being part of a solution with someone like yourself, who is a good kid, who does act in a certain way, just to make sure that, you know, 
your mates around you kind yeah. of look up to you a little bit. I mean, sorry to be blunt, but no, that's what fine. it feels like. Yeah, it is. Do you know what I mean? To fit in. Mm. And then yeah. as you move up into these different places, so whether it be like the um, the place at Merchants, and then you suddenly go up a notch, and there's a yeah. people referral unit at Lansdowne, which is off-site. You've got kids from all over South Bristol yeah. that are going there that are misbehaving. Then suddenly your behaviour has to go up another notch to fit in so you don't get your head kicked in, I would guess. Yeah. So how do you think that that's the right way to... Do you think that that is the right kind of solution for schools to deal with young people that might find it more tricky to engage in, in no, mainstream school? I don't agree with that at all. I reckon they should do... If they're, like, finding it hard, I reckon they should, like, not take them out to treat them, but, like, take them out, like, on their own and, like, do stuff with them on their own because you never know what that problem's behind it. They might have past history that you never know about, like, it's always different for people. Is there a reason, and like, you don't have to say anything you don't want to, mate, seriously, so just mm -hmm. like, but I'm just, it's a point, and we, I know it from doing this job for I don't know how long as a youth worker, that there are yeah. normally reasons why people end up getting into a situation where they're getting kicked out of class, they're getting kicked out of school, they're getting in trouble with yeah. the police. Not always the case, but there's normally underlying things. Yeah. Do you think there's certain underlying things within your life that has meant that you've not been able to engage in mainstream? Do yeah. you mind talking about it? Yeah, I don't. Um, as I was a little kid, I grew up with my dad and my mum, and my dad left me about a year ago, hmm. and that's been playing on my mind because about six months ago I was in Merchants, and ever since from there, I've went down now thinking of my dad and that, and uh, obviously I've had past history and that with my family. Like not long ago, I found out my little sister got autism, so mm -hmm. obviously that's like on my mind a bit as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit shocking, really, isn't it? Like if you find out your little sister got autism, like it's gonna play on your mind. So ever since from that, I've just went down now and I've got into my position what I'm in now. And, and what if you had to describe? Because obviously people are listening, don't we? Like if you had to describe the situation you feel like you're in now. What would that be? A uh, miserable life. Um, don't think in, like, not in the right mindset and that. What are you saying you're not in the right mindset? As in, is it how you, you look at yourself? Or yeah. Or is it how you, you feel like what opportunities there are for you or where you're going to go in life? Where what? I'm going to go in life. Where do you want to go in life? To be honest, I want to be an electrician or I want to do mechanics because I'm... I'm like not one of those ones, but I'm the one that likes to be physical. So I'm like think I like doing things with my hand, with my hands and my feet, and that's so, all. Like I won't be able to sit in a class and do writing, and that I like I like rather get up and do physical stuff like science because that's like mainly using your hands. So, hey, that's in, that's intelligence. There's so many different like parts of intelligence. Whether that be hand smart, whether that be creativity, whether yeah. that be Talking, whether that be knowledge, there's yeah. there's loads. Like you don't don't have to if that's the kind of thing that you're interested in, there will be opportunities there. We'll get back to that, right? Because this could be something that comes from this, yeah, and it'll make more sense in a minute. Well, maybe we talk about it now because we're going on about it now. Like at the end of the um, the podcast with everyone that we've spoken to so far, I've always said to them like to to say and ask about something that they really want to get. If they can ask yeah. the world out there about something that they want, everyone said different things. Yeah. And I just wonder when you just said that, whether there's an ask around an opportunity for you within those things you just said then? Yeah. I mean, so what would that ask be? Would it be that you, you'd want a, an apprenticeship in mechanics or... A, or as an electrician, or something to to basically give you some kind of flipping, what's the word? Some kind of optimism about yeah. how life's going to end. I want to, I want to do mechanics because my father, my dad, was um, before he done security, he was a mechanic, and I used to help him. And that when he used, because he used to go down by Lidl, yeah. and you got that car shop behind it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, my dad used to work then. I used to go down every now and again. I used to do it. But also, I like working on my bike. So if I got bike parts and I could just build them up and I can make a bike. 
So do you, do you think, so this, this is the ask, isn't it? If there's anyone listening that works at mechanics or potentially works at, um, as an electrician yeah, and they want um, a young person to do an apprenticeship or they need some kind of like support, as in help with someone doing some labouring for them, that's something that sounds like you'll be well up for doing. And they can get hold of grassroots communities for all the different social media things and we can we can pass on Stephen's number yeah but you're exactly that kind of kid if you find something you're interested in that would be your way out of all this rubbish that you're getting involved in now I'm yeah. saying all this rubbish I mean I can't imagine it's loads and loads but it blatantly I don't think without an opportunity it's probably not going to get any better anytime soon no um it always I always go off the thing <laughs> Let's go off, go off on one. I just wonder because it it feels like you're at a bit of a crossroads. Yeah. Because I know that Donna was um, mentoring you at Lansdowne, and and it's one of those things, isn't it? It was only for two terms. It probably took one term for her to kind of actually get to see you because you're out doing whatever you're doing. No, fair enough. Yeah. And then suddenly you start spending some time with her, and it's only one term, and then then it's over once yeah. you've built the relationship and actually maybe you're starting to talk about those things that you know that play on your mind that things you might need a bit of support with a bit of advice with yeah um, and I know Donna's been taking you to the the youth led boxing that um, we Regan. set up with Regan and um, Ella and Arcliff. yeah so it feels like you're, d- you're starting to make those decisions to go in a more of a positive way yeah and an opportunity with something like that mechanics or um, the electrician stuff would be the next step, wouldn't it? Yeah. How does it work with um, with Lansdowne? What um, what kind of classes are you doing now? Is it stuff that you're doing now to try and get you back into mainstream? Or do you think it literally is that you're going to be there just doing whatever they say until you're 16, unless you get kicked out of there? How, how does it work? What's your thought on it? So basically, obviously I'm in year nine and Lansdown only goes up to year nine. But obviously as I've only got seven weeks left, they're going to put me in LPW. And what we do is every day we do something different. And so t- Monday today we went to construction, which is building and that, then my temple meets, which is rock steady. Uh, Tuesday we go to... Uh, we do some up to... Uh, well, we do maths and then we do some up fun after. But today we went down to the youth centre by merchants to do some art. I don't know what it was. And on Wednesday we go on trips. So like last week, no. When we were broke up, we went go ape, which is like climbing and that and zip lines. And then Thursday we do cooking and then Friday, um, what do we do on Friday? Oh, Friday we go to Tafan, which is with Sam to do construction and we go out after to go bowling. So you, you're you're meant to be there then from like year nine to year 11? No. Is that right? How long, how long are you going to be there for? Seven weeks and I'm in the LPW, which is a different school and I'm going to be there till year 11 and I'm leaving. So with this ask then for something within mechanics and electrician and stuff, then that ain't going to really be possible or until you finish with year 11 but what could be possible that you could do support someone on a saturday yeah or something in the school holidays just to give you an opportunity of seeing if it's something that you like yeah and i suspect there probably is a a thing because i've worked in that kind of stuff before that you probably could start doing a college course earlier yeah if you really knew what you wanted to do well at the moment i go around um cleaning people's cars and like it helps my mum because if she got any rubbish and her boyfriend, if she got any rubbish, I put it down in the bins and I earn money out of it. So that's my way of getting money. Oh, you've got motivation to do something. And hopefully someone comes out of the woodwork with an opportunity. We, we yeah. should see, you never know. Um, do you feel like you have your voice heard? And when, when I say that, that could be at school, that could be um, at home, that could be out in the community. Do you feel like when you've got something to say, people listen? Yeah, very often. Do you want to, how? Do you want to explain how you think you've been heard? Well, um, my mates and that, if they speak and I open my mouth and try to say smart, 
they're a big quad and they look at me in this one. But um, at home, it's different because my mom got six of her kids and she has to look after them all. But she does listen sometimes. Do you feel like you spend more time out of the house because when you're with your friends... I make it, I'm making, this is just making an assumption that mm. it's less hectic because obviously in a house with six kids, I mean, I've only got two and it's hectic, so I, I can't even imagine. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> is it, is it, you know, is it better to be out in your, in your mind? Is it better to be out because it's less hectic and, and you could get to talk to your friends and people listen and your mum's obviously busy, isn't she? Yeah. I do like the fact is because in my house, obviously, my mum's got six kids and like she's everywhere with them and they're just annoying because they're so little. So I uh, goes out with my mates and we do our thing and then I come back and then I watch his Love Island when it's on. Whoa. And I go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> How does it make you feel then about at home, like feeling like, I'm guessing there's younger, are you, are you the oldest? Yeah. So do you feel like you're, it's in a dig at your mum by the way, because she's busy with like, she's, you know, like yeah. this is life, isn't it? Like, do, do you feel like the fact that you're the older, older son, how, how does it make you feel that you, you, you feel like you need to get out of the house to spend time with mates and it's a bit hectic at home and it's difficult for mum to kind of listen and how does that make you feel? Well, see me, like, I don't mind it, the fact is because when I go out, I'm like physical with my hands and that. So like we go any places like, and where I'm so used to like, as I was younger, I used to sit in my mate's house and that all the time. So now I just get used to it and I just sit in people's houses and like we ride around places. But obviously when I'm out, all I think about is on the back wheel, which is William. <laughs> <coughs> well, um, this, but like I said to you before, this podcast, really, mate, the, the whole point of this is, is just literally to provide a platform for young people to talk about stuff that matters to them. Yeah. And every young person is going to have different things that matter to them yeah um as i said before that could be like interests that could be stuff about the planet it could be stuff at home i yeah. don't know everyone's got a different kind of view if i said to you what really matters to you and why what would you say mine would be money weed and puff bars money weed and puff bars all yeah. in that order yeah so how, how do you just out of interest yeah get, so all your mates you're knocking around with that are going out on the bikes and all the rest of it is most people smoking weed. Yeah. Do... How's everyone paying for it? Money. But where's the money coming from? Their family. So I'm just... I'm making the assumption here, knowing yeah. a little bit about how the world works. You ain't going to be making that much money through putting the bins out. No, I had a family and that. Obviously, I've got mates in that, but obviously my mates, like... I'm not bribing or anything, but my mates and like family and that, like they got money, like they ain't got that much money, but they got money. So like they give their son money and then you go and buy weed and then we just smoke some weed and then uh we're going and do our own little thing. Can I, can I ask you an honest question? And yeah. Then, like you said, I think like there is an element that people need to do things in life to kind of learn themselves. I'm not I'm not telling you what to do. I wouldn't tell you what to do. Mm. But everyone goes through things and people learn through their mistakes and they learn, to be honest with you, you learn more from your mistakes than you do from the things that go well. Yeah. If you gave me um, an honest answer, do you think that people would say, I'll give you an example. My mate Donna, since she's been smoking weed, she's so much kinder. She's so much alert, more alert. Like she's better at the job. She's so much, she's so much better around her family. She puts, she's a lot more kind of compassionate, loving. Now, I ain't going to gas you to use those kind of words when you're talking about your mates. Didn't know Don smokes weed? Huh? Didn't know Donna smokes weed? Well, she doesn't, does she? But what I'm trying to say, <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to say to you is, like, do you feel, and let's be honest, like, do you feel that you're more alert, that you're, um, it's good for you, 
to smoke. I mean, I'm not saying like people like do things every now and then, yeah. parties and all the rest of it, but I guess what you're talking about is smoking every day. No, not every day. No? No. That's a bit too much. Okay. But I only does it to calm me down, so like if I'm if I'm in the mood or some art, yeah, or if like I've hurt myself. Like obviously I I'll have a couple of drags on a joint and then like I'll feel calm. So I'll be like ready to do some up. Cause to me in my head weed makes me feel calm. It's interesting, isn't it? I mean, let's be honest. Like most people would say that, wouldn't they? <laughs> but if if you're gonna look at um, things that you know positives that come from it, that that yeah. would be one of them. Yeah, like I said, I mean, I'm not not here to tell you what to do or what not to do. Um, but I guess to put an ask out, you've already said about the mechanics and electrician stuff for for opportunities. Is there anything else that you think that really matters to you, other than money, which you might earn? other than smoking weed and other than puff bars now yeah it's interesting isn't it? puff bars do you reckon puff bars are better for you than cigarettes really i get so seven thousand ones which will last me about two weeks but me with a whole pack of cigarettes they last me about three to four days because obviously my mates and that where they smoke weed i'll be given fags for a joint and that so i goes on one of these and these will last me about two weeks do you think you would be smoking weed now and smoking those puff bars if you weren't hanging around with the crowd that you're hanging around now with? No. Who, so this is my point when I was talking to you before about you went from being in mainstream school, whatever's mm. going on, then certain things are going on in the family, then yeah. you ended up going to the, I can't remember what it's called, but like the uh, pupil referral unit bit, the pre in merchants. Then you went from there to Lansdowne do you think that what you do day to day has changed because you, you're surrounded by? We different, yeah. Because I hang around with people who smoke it, but with the puff bars and cigarettes, no. I'd be smoking them if I didn't know. And the fact is because Mark smokes fags and uh, my family and that goes on puff bars. See, I've been smoking for about three years now, so to me, I know a bit more about bagging puff bars and weed and that because I've had goes to school and I learned about it. What I'm saying to you is, though, that if you were still in that mainstream school yeah. and you hadn't gone into those other places, I'm making the assumption I don't think you'd be doing half of that. I don't think you'd be smoking that. Yeah. I mean, you, might, you might be smoking that. I don't think you'd be smoking too much weed. I don't think you'd be getting into so much trouble. When I was in mainstream, because I used to do half days, before I used to go in, I used to go meet everyone on the field and I used to smoke a joint and then go in school stoned. When you're when you're in mainstream. When I'm in mainstream, I used to go in stone, so I didn't have to do anything. I just fall asleep. Well, that's probably one of the reasons why you ended up in the <laughs> the, the merchants. But can you see though? While I'm yeah. getting this, can you see the impact of your actions? Yeah. Do you know what I mean it's your actions? You're the one making those decisions, and, I, and as we've already spoke about, there's obviously reasons why you're making those decisions. Yeah. But you're in a position now, where hopefully you can start making a few more positive decisions. Yeah. Because there's only one, like we were talking about this crossroads, there's there's two ways you're going to go at this point. It's continually going down a path of, where's after, a pr- you know, after um, learning Partnership West? There ain't really, is there? No. You just won't be going to school, which I, I know that there'll be a number of people that ain't going to school. Yeah. What opportunities do you think they're going to get in life? Nothing. What do you think is going to happen in their life down the line? Selling drugs, being a crackhead. Then what do you think can happen? No notes on the floor. All I'm saying is it's not positive, is it? It's not going to have a positive effect on them. It's not going to have a positive effect on anyone around them, Mm. their family, other people in their community. It kind of just feels like you're in a situation now where the decisions you make now are probably going to impact massively on the next five years of your life and maybe longer. Yeah. So, fingers crossed... Some kind of opportunity in mechanics or electricians would be something that would be something that you want to do. Yeah. You're going to stick to the boxing. Yeah. Yeah. I think that feels like the positive way to go, doesn't it? Yeah. What do you reckon? Yeah. Cool.
If you're a young person and interested in having your voices heard and sharing those opinions, please do get in touch because this is a platform for you.